This podcast is brought to you by Dragon Shield. Check out the affiliate link down below to help support the show. Well, welcome to the Play to Win podcast, where we talk about winning in CEDH. I'm Cam. I'm Dylan. And this week, we got another CEDH topic to talk about. And this time, we're going to be talking about CEDH decks that don't really see as much play as they used to see play. Well, first off, I want to compliment you on your enunciation. Really spectacular work. Thank you. I'm working really hard to make sure that it's crisp and clear. Crisp. 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 Much like a potato chip. Ooh, okay, sure. We're talking about decks that aren't quite good anymore. Commanders that used to be very good, maybe don't see as much play anymore. Yeah, maybe it's not that they're not good, but maybe there's other things that are better now that people are favoring instead. Yeah, we'll talk about some of the things that make them a little bit less than and some of the things that make them cool, maybe. Yeah, exactly. So we're just going to fire right into the list as we always do. Give it to me. And the first deck we're going to talk about is Cody. Are we rating these? Are we going to come out like the 10, the most, the top 10 underrated uh, commanders in CDH? Is that what this kind of is? Or? The top 10 uh, decks that don't see play anymore? The top 10 worst decks in CDH. Well, that's a different <laughs> list. That's a different list because I feel like we should be, I start picking like really bad commanders. Yeah. Like Cody's actually a decent commander, but right? when he first came out, Cody was thought to be like the new tier zero, maybe like the new best deck. It could do everything that you were trying to do. It had a very easy line to directly get you to ad nauseum. Very appealing at first. Kind of fell off almost immediately. It won a tournament like right away, I think. And then everyone realized like, oh, it just kill the Cody. You know what I mean? Or counter any of the spell you know what i mean it was very easy to see a mile away the creature decks could tutor for collector roof early you were able to see the thing you had to cast the cody pass the turn wait the whole turn cycle no one do anything to interact with you in any way and then you could win that just that's a hard ask yeah cody already did its thing by winning a tournament when nobody knew about it and then when, like you said 100 percent of the games that cody was played in afterwards once cody dies once you don't get the chance to cast Cody again is normally how that goes. It's just too slow at this point. A five mana Cody that has to untap then is really bad. Might as well just cast the ad nauseum and find it the old natural way. Cody does a lot of good things. It's, there's no doubt about that. It's only three mana, which means you cast the easy off Jewel Lotus. It turns on Deflecting Squad and Fierce Guardianship very quickly. But... There, I just Blue Farm feels a little bit better. If you're going that strategy of Ad Nauseam, even though Blue Farm isn't the turbo route, if you want to do turbo Ad Nauseam, Rogsai feels better. If you want to do just like play the good cards, Blue Farm feels better. Cody does also require you to build your deck a little bit weirdly too, because unlike in Rogsai, where you really only have to play the good Grixis cards, you have to play more one mana cost spells so that you have something to trigger Cody and cascade into your Diabolic to That's not, yeah, Diabolic Profane Tutor. That's what it is. Thank you. You got it. Profane Tutor. Yeah, uh, I agree. One of the things that I'm thinking about when I'm thinking about a CDH deck is I want a deck that wants me to play good cards. Yeah. That rewards me for playing powerful cards. Whereas Cody makes you play bad cards. That's a stinker. There are some decks that that's good. Like, I think Magda, that's good. You have to play bad cards to make Magda good. What did you do with Magda? I uh, took it apart. Oh, okay. You did, didn't you? <laughs> Funny, Magda is actually, I consider, very similar to Cody, where, like, it won a tournament right away, and then once everyone figured out what it can do... Can't do anything anymore. Yeah, yeah, can't do anything anymore. Although, I feel like there's a more dedicated support group of Magda than there is Cody. I don't, I don't hear people clamoring for, like, I want to play... My Ad Nauseam Cody deck. Like, I don't really hear that as much, but I definitely see a lot of people that like Magda. Yeah, there is a, a nice cult following to, to Magda, which is great. I mean, the deck still can perform. I feel like it's not quite like Cody. It's kind of like the opposite of Cody, where people did figure out what it can do. They target down Magda, but, like, Magda can still do things and still win games even after she's being targeted down, whereas, like, Cody really can't bounce back in the same way. Yeah, Magda is wider in its capabilities. Like, even if you're not winning with Magda, you can piece stuff together in other ways i agree that cody's a little bit more difficult for that which is funny because that's a monocolor deck versus a five color deck either way i personally don't want to play either of those decks because of that reason that i have to play a bunch of bad cards that my commander makes good i want to play good cards that my commander makes better things like mox amber that's a mox that's really good like at a very low fail rate so that's that's where i want to be more yeah i totally agree with that so cody has definitely fallen off still really powerful i put magda on the list now too great next one we're going to talk about the then is one of your favorites, which is Kess. I mean, I feel like we can't um, we can't talk about a list of cards and commanders that 
aren't seeing as much play yeah. anymore and not talk about Cass. Cass is definitely a commander that I once loved very much. I still do love. I think the strategy is so clean. It's a perfect tainted pack deck, perfect amount of consultation deck. It's literally made to one card combo with those cards. The issue, unfortunately, is with CDH, all the decks are so similar. You have to compare them to what they're going to be like. And Kess is just so similar to Blue Farm. It's so similar to Tim Necrom, except you lose out on the white cards and your commanders just offer you raw card advantage. Whereas Kess, the three pips is a little bit hard. You really want the two pips so that Jewel Lotus is extra good. There's just a couple things like that that make Kess a little bit worse recently. And it's a little bit more bland, whereas like... I feel like there's more of a reason to play a deck like Xur as opposed to a deck like Kess, because at least Xur is a little bit more unique in what it does, and it like works very nicely with Ad Nauseam, whereas like Kess is just very generic, and if you're going to go that route, again, why aren't you playing Blue Farm? What's different about Kess and Xur is I've compared this aspect of Commanders before, but Xur creates from nothing. Xur, just yeah. by himself, does something. Kess needs other stuff. You need other things. You have to cast other instant sorceries and get them in your graveyard. That's normally an easy task, but it doesn't do anything on its own. That's that's a big distinction. Timna Krom, they do things on their own. Timna will make you draw cards. Krom will help you with Timna, make you draw cards. Krom does rely on its opponents for it to draw cards, but Krom still works with Timna to draw cards. So for that reason, Kess just gets bumped out a little yeah, bit. Yeah, I think that's one of the commanders where I don't even think there's anything that they could print in the future that would like make me want to play Kess over blue farm again or something like that i don't know just nostalgia is the only reason that i pick up cast like once a year i'm like okay there's a new like graveyard card or new maybe cantrip removal or something like that that i can put in cast and i'll sleeve it up and I'll play three or four games i'll go nope never mind <laughs> good maybe you're feeling like oh i just want to play an entomb deck a deck yeah. where entomb feels really good sure all right let's talk about another deck uh edric is the next deck we're going to talk about then to be honest i never liked edric and every time i won i felt like it was luck or something even though it's definitely not true i just edric giving your opponents access to drawing extra cards that's just, just a bad a bad thing to do now it's a bad thing to there's so many more timna decks than ever before and i get it like the main game plan against a lot of those decks is like save your edric until you can guarantee you're drawing like four or five cards and win the game soon after that i just I don't really want to be playing small creature decks as much recently that that revolve around attacking to do the thing. Even before Orcish Bowmaster, this deck had fallen way out of favor. And it really is the giving your opponent's card advantage, I think. That just makes it so much worse now. Plus, you aren't wrong. Like, you do have to get kind of lucky. You have to make sure that you are continuously drawing into five and six mana spells that are going to let you keep drawing into more spells. So it's not really the easiest thing to set up anymore yeah. either. And, and it's also just going to be compared to Kinnon because it is a two-color Simic deck that's in, it has access to the same things that Kinnon has access to. And I just think Kinnon is so strong. Any, any Simic deck would, would do fails in comparison, I think. And you know what? Edric's another one of these decks where you have to play bad cards to make it good. Yeah. There's just a lot of these dumb one ones that give things flying or like are unblockable that are just these dud cards that you'll end up with 17 of them in your hand and not your extra turn spell that you need. Yeah. And definitely you can win with this deck. It is a deck that rewards skilled pilots for sure. I get that. Um, just from our point of view, from my point of view, I don't, I don't want to be playing stuff like this in CDH anymore. No, me neither. All right, we said we were going to rank them, and we haven't ranked oh, any of did them. did we say that? So, like, which one's the worst? We're going to rank them from worst to best. So, so our number one is the worst deck. Well, the worst deck so far is Edric. Sorry, Edric, yeah. Edric players. I apologize. I think Kess is after that, and I think Cody's next. I still think five-color Cody ad nauseum deck is fine. Like, it is still going to win more games. And Grixis Pile is also fine. It's going to win more games. But when we talk about CDH, I always look at it at, like, an optimization angle. And if I'm going to play this strategy, this core grouping of cards, uh, many times I will either go, can I just do Blue Farm? Can I do Roxy? Or can I do Tivit with this, whatever I want to do here? Do I, can I do Blue Farm or Fast Blue Farm or Slow Blue Farm? That's the metagame. Yeah, I totally agree. I totally agree. <laughs> there are and obviously if I other can't decks, do, but... <laughs> if I can't do those things, right. then yes, I can go into that strategy. Otherwise, no, just play one of those three decks. For me right now, that's where my head's at. I feel that especially because right now I'm back in a spot where I don't have a humongous emotional attachment to a CEDH deck. Yeah. Like I'm I'm liking Kenrith and Nimrus, or, but I don't have like this 
tremendous attachment to them that I'll feel bad if I need to take them apart. No, and I think that's like for me, that's always been what CDH is, is like my decks change with my opinion. As yeah. I as I alter my opinion and see new tournament results and see new decks come out. I, my my opinion is going to change, and I'm always just going to want to play whatever the best deck is. That's just how my brain works. That's how I think. I just want to play one of the top ten best decks, and I think CDH has probably twenty decks that are like in my mind all in the same like they could win a tournament level. Yeah, I There's feel probably that. much more than that to be honest, but twenty that I would play probably. I totally agree. Like there's there's a lot that you can play that can win, and I'm at a point now where I'm starting to like decks that will do well in like whatever the meta game is, and I kind of like that thought like where i'll think well this card has seen a lot of play and i now want to play this card because i can do this line and this interaction which works really well under these this set of circumstances in the current meta very broad speak i love that yes please, please clip that for a short okay <laughs> <laughs> we could be talking about anything and that could mean anything, anything like you just said. Yeah. but it applies i think it's great I sound like a politician <laughs> yeah you just talked a lot did you say much i'm not sure no, you did. I know you did. <laughs> I said words. I feel like a Fraser Crane, kind of. I like that comparison. I agree with your rankings, though. Magda is the best tech that we've talked about so far. Oh, I forgot Magda. Yeah, Magda, too. Followed by Cody, then Cass, and then Edric being the worst. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's probably... That's. I don't know if I agree that Magda's better than Cody. I feel like you slipped that in there pretty quick. I don't know about that. <laughs> Magda has performed better after its tournament win than Cody has. That's probably true. Yeah. And in the current meta, even with Bowmaster. Yeah. Okay. Where's Cody? Show me Cody. Yeah. I don't know. No I Cody. I haven't seen a Cody do well recently at all. So yeah, you're right. I, I, I concede. Yeah. All right. Whew. <laughs> all right. Let's talk about a deck that doesn't see that much play anymore, but maybe has started to bounce back a little bit. Arkham Dagson. Oh, yeah. So, so this is a mono blue commander that doesn't really see play anymore because its main combo piece is no longer in the format. For the uh, viewer or listener at home, can we can we say what that one does just in case they don't know what it does off the top of their head? Yeah, definitely not because you don't know what it does. I like I know it's like artifact. Maybe it searches or untaps something. Yeah, it's four um, mana definitely. It does both actually. I think. Yeah, I just don't. Yeah, the cost and the specifications. So here are. Are some words give them to me give me your best interpretation of words so arkham dagson is three and a blue for a two two legendary creature human artificer it says tap target artifact creatures controller sacrifices it that player may search their library for a non-creature artifact card put it onto the battlefield then shuffle their library so it's basically a pseudo polymorph for only an artifact creature that you have in play but you get to take any artifact from your deck and put it in play instead of one that you spin into randomly the one ring is a very good artifact so is portal to phyrexia oh sure both of those cards have kind of made arkham's resurgence interesting happen, okay yeah but not enough that i would like say you should play this over Urza. Sure. For me, same. it's the same camp as um, things like Xur and Cody that I have to play them, then you have to untap with them. And that's a stinker for me. But powerful effect. Very strong. If you can do the thing, if you can get the value pieces out, this one I feel like is a great one that can take over in like a stack game or if people aren't expecting it. I don't know what it did exactly. So... For that reason, you're going to win some games for sure. The other thing was that this was the mono blue commander before Urza was even printed then too. So between that and losing Paradox Engine, which by the way was like the main thing you would go get, because then you could just get infinite mana. Yeah. And then Paradox Engine people. I never played a game of commander with Paradox Engine in the format. Oh, I did. It's a shame that Paradox Engine, the ban of it really killed a lot of fringe decks. It killed a lot of decks like this, that like it, this deck wasn't too powerful before, but Paradox Engine made it playable. I'm glad it's seeing a little bit of a creep back with powerful artifacts like the ones we talked about getting printed. That's great. But yeah, that card, Paradox Engine, was a fucking strong one. Didn't that also make the original 
Sisse, Captain Sisse, really good yes, too. Yes, the Selesnia one. Yeah, you could just like search your deck for so many different things. It was, yeah, very powerful. That's pretty nuts. That's another yeah. one that I've also seen see a little bit more play recently. And I actually kind of like a lot as like a stacks deck and also looking to win with certain combos. Like having the ability to tutor in your command zone is pretty good. There's so many legendary creatures that they print yeah. now with just like three and four lines of text on them. Yeah. And just being able to go get them and then playing like Wirewood Symbiote or and some other fuck that's that just, can untap Sisse. That's to say gets any legendary permanent, right? Any legendary permanent. Yeah, and there's no on the bo- battlefield restriction. Like the five color to say that does see a lot of play, it has that kind of like restriction. You can really kind of only use it for the tutor line. There's some other things that you can do, but you have to invest something else and then spend that five mana. Whereas this one, you just wait. We talked about how waiting is bad, but no other investment besides just like searching and finding. That's pretty good. That is really good. Yeah. That one wasn't on your list. We we're just talking about it. We no, but it's on the list now. <laughs> Great. Okay. Yeah. So Arkham and Sisse, where are we going to place them amongst the four other decks that we've talked about here? Uh, remind me the four again. We have Magda, Cody, Kess. And Edric. And Edric. I think these are both better than Edric, but maybe worse than Kess. What do you think? I think that they're both worse than Edric. Okay. Because like at least Edric is like something you can still do in the format. But like these two decks got completely neutered once their combo piece was banned. Yeah. <laughs> Buy Jack and Jill merch down below to support the dogs. Feed them. Feed by them. By buying merch. If you don't buy the shirt, they don't eat. They know this. We'll give them a treat for every shirt that we sell. The thing that I said is untrue. What Cameron said is true, though. Uh, what were we talking about? I think I'm being a little bit too harsh on Arkham Daxon, but maybe I'm not being that harsh on Captain Sisse at this point anymore. Because like we mentioned, there are two new artifacts that are super good to just get into play. I will say if I may, maybe this is wrong. If I see either of these commanders, I'm not scared. No, I'm not scared. I'm not scared. So and that's how they win games. And that's that how we, they win games. We won't respect to them. Yep. There you go. Moving on. All right. We'll make them the best decks then. <laughs> Great. Great. Here's one I kind of put on here that is a little bit more of a recent deck that you don't really see anymore. Okay. This is Winoda. Oh, yeah. Winoda. A lot of hubbub. A lot of hubbub about Winoda. Yeah, it took a bit of a dive recently. My issue with playing the deck is you could do something impressive all the time, and that flashy thing is memorable, but it was still kind of difficult to close out the game. You couldn't seize the window exactly when you wanted to. You were kind of just like waiting for your Winoda triggers to do it, and if they whiffed, you're just not losing that game. They didn't whiff often, but the fact that you don't have the ability to control that I think is a reason why it doesn't see a ton of more play in CDH. CDH players generally want to try to just have more of an influence on their game, and I, Winoda maybe just doesn't have that. Yeah, the randomness makes it really tough because even though you are getting a great creature to put into play, sometimes it's the wrong creature that you need to get. And a big part about playing stacks, as we've talked about, is you need to make sure that you're timing your pieces correctly. Otherwise, you're giving the wrong person the game and you're shutting out the wrong player instead. I wonder if that is an issue with Winoda is that that pick of like when it's okay to just not pick anything versus like pick the Blood Moon that's going to only lock out the two players that can't win anyway. Like, I those decisions probably make a big difference in Winota. It's probably what separates the good Winota players from the chaff Winota players, too. I mean, playing stacks is hard. We know that. And that's a barrier to entry on any stacks decks doing well in CDH. Also, the winning in the appropriate amount of time, stacks decks, even Winota can have a hard time with that. Even though it's turbo list, sometimes it just locks down the game for too long. Yeah, exactly. And they can't get the damage in. Plus, I my new strategy against Winota is just make your, the table afraid of Winota because it is like usually the most threatening thing yeah. but then you can sneak in wins underneath the stacks pieces because like you set up scenarios where your opponents have to use their interaction on the Winota and then you can just like win the game because now your opponents have nothing they just got scared of Winota yeah if you find your window appropriately you're right if you if you do that and wait until just after the interaction is blown that can be great so using stacks that like using stacks to your advantage using other player stacks to your advantage is another reason why I just I'm staying away from these type of strategies. Yeah, so there's really a lot of reasons why Winota has kind of taken a bit of a dip. Still a good deck, still powerful, can still do broken things, but not as not as uh, controllable as we're looking for perhaps. Yeah, I mean I think it's the best deck that we've talked about so far. Oh yeah. That's Definitely. True. It still has legs, and I don't want to say that, like, you can't do well with this deck anymore. But definitely it's, can do well. It's definitely seen a lot less play than it had been 
six months ago even yeah i agree it's still probably like a tier two or three deck which is higher than some of these other ones that we've talked about but less good than before the next deck that we're going to talk about has just been outclassed by other things that do the exact same thing and i just felt a little nostalgic for una queen of the fey and just oh. wanted to mention una yeah there are a thousand blue black demir commanders i don't know why i was redundant there that do this, that are an outlet for Ice Grand Scepter or Infinite Mana or something like that. There's a bunch that do better, and the strategy isn't even great. It's arguable that if you're in Demure Control, Demure Consultation, you just want card advantage in your command zone, so things like Nimrus and Talion are just better because you don't need an extra way to make Ice Grand Scepter Dramatic Reversal good because that combo kind of stinky, but Demonic Consultation Thassa's Oracle is already right there, so you just want ways to draw cards. Yeah, that's the thing. Those are kind of the, the two main reasons why I would say it's kind of gone downhill. Back in the day when you didn't have card advantage options in the command zone in this combo of colors yeah the the combo outlet is exactly what you needed and that was perfect at the time you didn't even have thassa's oracle you had lab man instead yeah. like that yeah that combo was much worse before and now dramatic reversal is just something that you really don't want to be doing anymore there's so many cards that interact with it poorly and can really set yourself up for failure failure and there's just so many easier and cleaner wins you can assemble for infinite mana now so it's really just gone downhill. I agree. Yeah, it's unfortunate. Isochron Scepter Dramatic Reversal once was like the epitome of CDH combos. At least that's how I viewed it when I first entered the format. But now I basically never see it. Besides when we try to force it into like one of the uh, one of the new set CDH games because we're nostalgic for it. But yeah. All oh, right. Yeah. We don't have another option for a CDH commander. This one combos with infinite mana. If I want to win in blue black, I want to win Thoracal. If I want to win with infinite mana, I want to win with Dockside. That's it. Just like those options are just better a lot of the times. Yeah, exactly. So where do you want to place Una within our list? Low. Like way low. Like it, it's a it's a bad one, like, so we place it high. Like worse than Cass. It's worse than Cass. Like, what about definitely. and it's definitely better than Edric, though. Yeah, better than Edric. Because it, at least now you have Thassa's Oracle Demonic right. Consultation. Already. It's a it's still a great deck. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I would play it in a set review. Demi episode, yeah, gameplay Demi episode. Demi Sorry. <laughs> What would you play it in? <laughs> I don't remember. Demir Pile's good. Moving on, please. All right. Prosh is the next one. This one's actually especially funny because I'm pretty sure it had at least one top 16s showing in a tournament recently. Did it. Good for Prosh. Yeah. Where to begin on something like this? Hmm. The many ways. It's worse than Corvold. M yeah, definitely worse than Corvold now. It needs an extra piece to win with Food Chain, which the other Food Chain's decks don't need um that's it that's the kind of the extent of the list it's just in every way that it's comparable to other things it's worse besides the fact that prosh is just fucking cool you know for that reason prosh if is badass your, if your if your answer to the question why you played prosh is because prosh is fucking cool that's a great reason to play it 100 percent. but besides that for me i'm playing anything else Prosh was like the first deck that I played that I tried to make CEDH. Yeah. And like it had a food chain in it, but that's really the only thing that made it CEDH. Yeah. So I, I really like Prosh, but like it's just not the greatest of decks, I would say, right now. Card advantage that Corvold offers you is just much better, I think, in my opinion. It's better than the zero ones that you get. And it gives you a lot more outlets to win with, too. Like, you don't have to lean so much into the food chain lines, which are susceptible to, like, Ristic Study. Every and single place of hate in the world to food chain Exactly. Sucks too. But, like, you can go through Dockside Loops instead, which help you get more cards as you're comboing, too. So I think Corvold has just outshined Prosh in so many ways that... I wouldn't touch this thing anymore. Yeah, and which is okay. That's a great. That's the great part about magic is magic evolves, and uh, we get new stuff that's better. Because I don't want to play the same thing forever. That being said, I think it's the worst deck that we've talked about so far. Sorry, Prosh. The next deck we're going to talk about was near and dear to my heart for quite a long time. Give it to me, Jessica Ishai. Mm, yeah. Jessica Ishai. What are we thinking about Jessica Ishai right now? I think that this deck still does have its fans, but there are significantly fewer fans out there, I've noticed, than there have been in the past. Yeah. I think this deck was kind of a... I'm going to say it. This deck was kind of a fad for like 2021, yeah. 2022. Like this kind of felt like oh, oh, this really cool thing you could do in the command zone. This way you could kill a player with commander damage super quickly. Yeah. 
it's not really that good. Like, the losing out on card advantage is just so painful. You are in good colors, but, like, the good colors you're in are also very limited in tutors, very limited in, like, long-term card advantage options. So not having something in your command zone that's going to get you cards is super detrimental. I was thinking about, now hear me out here, what about Dargo Ishai? Dargo Ishai, okay. Instead of going all in on making the bird big, which for you was really more of a background strategy. That wasn't your yeah. main focus point, right? But what if you go all in on a Dargo? You get to do some of the Dargo stuff. I guess in Jeskai Colors, you don't get quite as many Dargo stuff, but you're, what if your game plan is just get a bunch of big creatures out? You play Sarah Ascendant. You play the two-mana Red Goblin that's called... Sardian Avenger? Sardian Avenger. You try to get some other big idiots in. What if you try, are we at the point yet where we can do aggro and CDH? Just like big overrate creatures attack. Is there a better partner than Dargo then? Dargo's if we're just, just trying to do like a big... 7-5 for one mana. That's great. But what am I sacrificing? Like it, it sounds like all stuff. these big things that I need hmm. are going to be in play. Is there like... You're playing a bunch of fast mana still. I guess that's true. You don't think it's good. I don't know. You I don't think it. it's great. I don't like it. Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> You're dead wrong there. <laughs> All right. Moving on. Uh, what would you What would you rather play as Jeskai Pile? Like Jeskai Pile, I feel like is a great deck. Your intuition line is excellent. Underworld Breach, very good. Where are you at if you had to play Jeskai right now? What would you play? I would play Blue Farm. Oh, yep. Okay. <laughs> I, would, I think I think it's just under that same umbrella of it, yeah. like like with Cass. Like why are, why am I in Jeskai Pile? Like probably Elsha, I guess. Like Elsha is the closest to a card advantage commander that I'm gonna get in these colors. I like New Narset. The New Narset's good. Kind of. It get buy stuff back from like anyone's graveyard oh, you know not what buys back but i was just flash, playing on mental misplay stream and kai who just top forward with that new narset was playing that deck was it good let me tell you that deck is scary hmm. it, it's one of these new commanders that just has like things that you forget that it has yeah and then you reread the card and it's like why does this card do so much it has prowess creatures you control have prowess all the creatures that is the exact line i was referencing just now <laughs> we're like why is dockside a four five <laughs> yeah oh, yeah you cast brainstorm and you did all this other stuff that's interesting it was really powerful and then like you can it's like all, any non-creatures with cmc less than narset's power when she attacks so like he was flashing back smothering tide from his graveyard which is absolutely nuts yeah um he was playing ways to give it haste he was playing expedite he was playing greaves he was playing anger of the gods and like wrath away our boards but his commander stayed alive yeah that's pretty good it was super, super cool to see. Interesting. Yeah, there are there are good options. I do agree with your initial gut reaction is if I'm playing Jeskai, should I just play Blue Farm maybe? Just because the consistency you get from tutors and the raw card advantage from Timna is so powerful. But that's not to say that these piles don't have their successes and reasons to play these over that too. You lose a lot less life with a deck like this than that's you do very Blue true Farm. i did like that about jessica ishai is that people are significantly less inclined to attack you because you're not and and you can start using your life total on other things like tarnished citadel is the land that you get then that you don't feel bad for putting three mana into or putting three life into to get your color fixing and you can maybe play a basic or two even which i've increasingly blown people out with path to exile every time i play that card it's better than swords no one has basics in their library anymore not that there's a really good reason to play it either way but sometimes I have a hard time squeaking at a basic in a three color deck. But I know, but but you could. You probably shouldn't. I don't know. I think you can pretty easily. Either way, there are some there are good positive reasons to not want the black. I mean, like we said, like when you're also blue farm, you're the number one target. Everyone knows it's the best deck. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's, Everyone knows that's true. Don't even bother trying to politic your way out of it. Everyone knows you can just attack the blue farm player. Everyone's gonna do it. So if you're not on blue farm, you a little less heat. Yeah, I I would definitely say Elsha though. If I had okay. to solidify one, I would I would think it's Elsha. I'm a bandwagoner, so I want to try whatever's hot and fresh and new right now. So I would want to try Narset, but try new Narset. Yeah, I think that's definitely fair. Speaking of Narset, Narset Enlightened Master is also on this list. Original. This is the original legendary, legendary creature. creature Narset. Yes. This one allows you to cast extra spells a bunch. Yeah, you get to look at the top four of your library and hope that one of them is an extra turn spell, and then just keep attacking the table and taking extra turns. And or extra the combat, game. I think. Both. Yeah, you just go to try, try to find both. This one is one that I lose to about once a year. Yeah. I see it probably maybe once a year, 
Um, if you get the Jewel Lotus start, if you get this thing out on turn one or two, you're pack, you're going, you're moving. That's Dude, really she great. Is, she is hexproof. She too, has hexproof. Right? She yeah. is hard to kill. So she does have to wait a turn, but she's hard to remove. Um, you're also with three two, and you have to not die when well, on blocks. And right? that's a huge and issue too. Increasingly difficult. But she might have first strike. She does not. I don't think. I'm gonna look her up. Maybe she does. You know what? You might be right. Did she have first strike and hexproof? Wow, she's good. She has first strike and hexproof. There yeah. you go. That's pretty helpful. And so is just getting extra combat and winning the game. Yeah, for me, another one of I don't want to have to play 15 bad cards in my deck to play this. Um, but Especially if that's your play really style. expensive bad cards, yeah. too. Yeah. <laughs> like, if you're not doing your thing, it's hard to do much of anything. I get... I get run over by Drowneth Magistrate enough as it is. No thank you. You know, for me, it's a no thank you. Yeah, this card definitely falls with Drowneth Magistrate in the format, too. Like, at least some of the other Jeskai options we were talking about, like Jeskai Ishai can still do stuff without it. I guess this could, too, because, like, you are still in, like, the Underworld Breach colors, and, like, you can set up your intuition piles. But I feel like, again... You're playing significantly more bad cards in this list than you are in any of the other Jeskai piles we've talked about. Yeah, and like to compare it to a six mana commander that is good, like Tivit. Tivit plays one bad card technically, and it's yeah. not even really that bad. Like it's the, its win condition is one two mana artifact, which is a very low floor rate. That even if you have extra artifacts without casting your Tivit, you could have a couple extra rocks. You could fire off an extra turn. Like this, the floor for it is incredibly. Uh, high, I would say, on Tivit's rate of bad cards. Tivit plays none of them. So when you're playing another six mana commander in three colors, you you have to compare it kind of there, I feel like. Yeah, I agree. And that also makes this deck hard to mulligan then too because you just find hands with like a ton of expensive spells and you can't do anything. So Narset, pretty poopy. <laughs> pretty poopy Narset. Let's talk about Armix. Armix. I feel like Armix had this phase where like it was this pretty cool tournament commander i think it just did top four there was an armix chrome list i think yeah well we are talking about a couple cards that are making resurgences <laughs> accidentally so might as well talk about this too removal is not something you see very often in the command zone no it's not and when paired with a partner that has card advantage it can be really good especially when it's thrasios or crown i think that these armix decks are a little bit underrated almost i feel like they should see a little bit more play um the slot of best grixis deck is just full of a lot of good stuff but I, I i think this one is unfortunately like this is also better than Cass. this is also better than Cass, right yeah i would definitely think so like these things create on their own they don't have to do any other investment armix you need a, a card in hand to discard to armix is an artifact in itself so you can already get rid of one thing already minimally. It's, immediately it's going to be a minus one minus one even without anything else right so yeah it just is a bummer that it does cost the card in hand because all of your cards in Grixis are really good, and sometimes you really want those cards. Yeah, I imagine this commander pairing is one that excels incredibly when both commanders are in play more so than much other partner commanders because yes. you really need Krom to help fill you back up on So like if you Jeweled Lotus this Armix out first and then get Dranith Magistrated, you just like... Oh, you just kill Drenith Magistrate. Yeah, well, hopefully you have enough artifacts. You can just kill Drenith Magistrate. But. And you also have to be attacking that player. Like, you can't attack someone else who's more open and then try to kill someone else's Seaboard Muse. It has to be that player. So you do have a chance that you are just going to also lose your Armix at the same time and end up two for one in yourself to free the whole table up from Drenith Magistrate. That's not good. That's not good at all. It's also not Blue Farm. It's also not Blue Farm. Which is just always, you know, why not just play Blue Farm? Why not just play Blue Farm? <laughs> yeah, we should just be Card advantage is just so good. You, I want more double card advantage rather than card advantage removal. Thank you. One order of double card advantage. Thank you. All right, so we didn't place the Jeskai decks or Armix. Yeah. We should low, rank them. They're somewhere on that list. They're somewhere. You said that Jeskai is better than Kess? I think Grixis is better than Jeskai. So then, but Jessica is better than Demir Una. Probably, yeah. And Jessica uh, Ishai is better yeah. than Narset. Probably, yeah. Yep, yeah. Yeah. I would say Jessica Pile is one deck with all of those commanders, and Jessica Pile, well, this is a commander. We're talking about commanders specifically. Yeah. In CDH, commanders are so driven by the colors more so than the commander the deck is the mixer of the colors that's the deck because just because the core strategy is so close to the same well there's still also different strategies within the colors yeah i guess every blue black deck is going to play fast as oracle but that doesn't mean that we call them all consultation decks 
Yeah, that's true. I do consider all blue black decks to be like roughly the same though. Like I expect the same shit. Bunch of tutors, bunch of counter spells, card advantage, and a compact thus circle win. I agree for like blue black, but like what I'm referring to, like I'm also considering five color decks blue black decks. Like I wouldn't call like oh, no, an no, yeah, Ajila. a five color deck is a five color deck. Yeah, I, just because you win with deck. Thoracle doesn't mean that no. like even in a five color deck, I'm focusing on the Thoracle consultation part. I specifically mean the colors of the deck dictate what the deck is to me more than the commander, but that's neither here nor there. I'm I of... see. Okay. Yeah. So Jess guy is the deck. The deck is Jess guy, but like your flavor of Jess guy is which commander you pick. I feel the same for every color combination. Basically, that's not always the case. Uh, the Gitrog monster is much different than yeah. Yalrog and Miltani, whatever that one is. Those are very different decks, but they still have a core that is relatively you know, removal and uh, s small amounts of disruption. Yeah, it's probably like 80% that, like 80% the color combination, 20% the commander, I would probably say. It's a range, but yeah, yeah I would agree. Because like even in mono blue, like the difference between Urza versus like like uh, High Tide Jace, that's a horrible example. <laughs> um, Those ones might be a little bit different, but they're still playing probably a very similar uh, counterspell package. Jace probably plays a little bit more, where Urza plays a couple more artifacts. Every deck is playing the same counterspell pack, but especially the mono blue ones. They have yes. they have a couple extra ones that they might be playing that other decks won't. That's all. Okay, I guess that's fair. Just a random tangent. Anyway, speaking of mono blue, Teferi Chainveil is still winning tournaments somehow. It's still winning tournaments, so I can't talk shit. Deck is great. <laughs> deck must be great. Deck must be great. Yeah, it's only great in one person's hands, though. Is that what? Has it just been the same person? It has been the same person, yes. Yeah, some people just know the deck very well. I've tried playing that list, man, and I don't know I how he it. does it. Because that there's just some wild stuff. It's easy to win games when no one knows what the fuck you're doing. And I, Teferi's definitely one where everyone's not exactly sure. Yeah. What they're, like, they know, but apparently not well enough. And it's easy to lose games when you don't know what the fuck you're doing. Yeah, that's that's also true. Yeah. All right, so we got to rank Armix and Teferi still in this list here. Armix is better than Kess. Armix is better than Kess. Yeah, Armix is better. Uh, and then better than the Jeskai piles then. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. I do think that that original Narset is a much different deck than Jeskai Pile, though, because that one's not even playing Underworld Breach, I don't think. That is part of the reason why I also yeah. have the separate two. I, yeah. But I still think it's better than Una. Yep. Yep. And then Armix, I would say, is better than Cody. Cody's just like this one trick pony. Yeah, I think so. And can't do too much after yeah, that. So I think I'd so. rather do Armix. And green cards suck, so. Green, and you have to play green and Cody. That sucks. Yes. <laughs> Teferi. Chain Veil, where do we place Teferi? This one I'm, I have a hard time with, because I place it rather low. If I see this one in the dark, I'm not going to be afraid of this commander, even with its wins under the belt. I agree. I would be more scared of it than Prosh, though. Definitely. And probably less scared of it than... Probably more scared of it than Edric, maybe. More than Edric, more than Una, but maybe even... I would say less than Una. You would say less than enough. I would say, yeah, because at least that deck can threaten a demonic consultation win if I'm not paying attention. Yeah, I think I'm with you. It's worse than it's worse than Una. We only have five other commanders that we're going to talk about here. Great, let's fly through them. All right, first one is Scion of the Ur Dragon. Stinky, stinking. This was when you didn't have options for five color commanders. I remember vividly, Hermit Druid Scion was like a, a very powerful deck. It just played all the good cards, and who cares what your commander did? You played Hermit Druid, and that was great. That's not the time we live in. Wizards has been. Putting cards into our format, so we get to play a whole bunch of other good sh shit. Just playing five colors, Kenrith or Najila is the way to go. Yeah, I would definitely agree. This line, the combo line with it, is even really crusty because it's World Gorger Dragon, right? To be honest with you, I don't know. I think it's like three or four dragons that you chain together somehow, but I'm I'm not familiar. I shouldn't be talking about shit that I don't know. Well, it's another one of these decks, just by saying that, we know that you have to play bad cards to play this deck. Which is, we know, a bad thing. Yeah, we've already said that a bunch of times this podcast here. So um, we're I, I'm not scared of this deck at all. I'm probably, uh, I still am scared of Prosh less. Maybe I'm not, because Prosh has had some wins. So maybe I am a little bit more on my toes. Gen players are more aggressive. That's you know what true. I mean? So they can still win with Ad Nauseam. And so some... far, this is the least scary deck. Yeah, I would say so. Maybe that's the list. What are the least scary decks? Oh, that's a good one. It's October. Because yeah, we're coming up. We will be coming up on what are the spookiest 
decks in CEDH. Oh, this is the least scariest, and that one will be and the that, most scariest. Oh, beautiful. Perfect. Don't that, you love when we come up with a podcast <laughs> idea 40 minutes into the podcast? Let's go back and do the whole thing over, but like that. All right. Welcome to the Play to Win podcast. <laughs> That's funny. All right. Let's talk about another deck that we've already talked about, but doesn't see play anymore. Give it to me. Opus Thief. Oh, wow. Isn't this funny? This is funny because it does still see play. Yeah, Tim Necrom was once I viewed as a meta buster deck. It was really good against the Flash meta because Flash, more oftentimes than not, all the Flash players would have to hold up Flash and Hulk in their hand, and they were just waiting for the right moment. But if you could wheel it out of their hand, it would throw off all the tutors that have been trying to search for it, uh, and it was just it was really good against that strategy. But it's kind of so funny that once that strategy gets banned, they're like, okay, let's just instead now we'll play the best cards and we'll just do the good thing instead yeah it is kind of funny how that totally flips on its head i miss cards like notion thief i would love to see a return of opus thief but we've said this many times it's just better to play less bad cards the strategy of tim necrom blue farm just allows you to play more good cards whereas like the only bad cards in that deck are brain freeze and kind of lines i'm in are not so good yeah i totally agree underworld breach even as just like as like a, a couple regrowth like as a fair underworld breach is still decent even though that basically never happens but with the other situation there's just there's, there's more dead cards i've had a lot of success with notion thief over the past year like it's still a really powerful card but like the more that you play at no the more that you kind of have to think like is this something i'm actually trying to do yeah and if you want to do the wheels thing to be honest i think rog silas just does wheels better and i think rog Sai could fit in a narset and an ocean thief and you're good to go so if you're going to do that strategy i think it maybe sits better somewhere else because rog Sai is so explosive it can make use of the wheels when they're not a combo piece just the turn one wheel it can do a lot with that yeah i would still even say that i'm still not a big fan of wheels and wouldn't want to play a deck that's jam-packed full of every single wheel anymore either yeah i think just there's four of them that are playable wheel of fortune windfall time twister and unfortunately wheel of misfortune i don't like saying that but it, as a turn one wheel it's fine in rock Sai or something i i think it's fine uh, to just wheel yourself if, if you're you... trying to draw that many cards it would it's not for the opus thief deck no it's not for that opus thief deck but if you're playing wheels already you probably play it and then maybe if you want to force a notion thief in a narset i wouldn't blame you that being said this is the scariest deck so far Yes. If I just sat down against Tim yeah, Crom, if I didn't even know that they are playing the Opus Thief strategy, I would yeah. be scared. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Also, Narset should see play in Edric, you know? Well, yeah, Narset should see play in Edric, yeah. Just saying. Yeah. Moving on. Cool. Thrasios Timna is the next one. Weird. Weird. Very weird, the, right? How this one is another one where, like, this was at one point the best deck in the format, and there was 10 different versions you could play this deck, and they were all the top 10 best decks in the format, I And thought. none of them are good anymore And now. none of them are good anymore now. Yeah, it was Hulk. It was the other card that we talked about already, the big artifact, five-mana artifact. That's banned. Paradox Engine. Yep, there was a Paradox Engine version. There was the uh, Scepter versions as well. There was the Razakath version. There was a Stax version. There was a lot of different ways. There was Hermitrude and Flash and all of these things. So much stuff you could do. Green hasn't gotten a good card recently, and Red has gotten a lot of good cards. And th that's the main reason, honestly, that Timna Krom has become the best. Because it was always Timna. Timna was always the best commander. Timna just got to use Thrasios a little bit. And we went a little bit over overhead on the Thrasios, I think. Um, but really, it's Timna that's good, and Krom also just works really well with Timna. It allows you for more draws with Timna, so you can control your draws, which is great. Um, but the red thing, Dockside and Underworld Breach, are simply too strong. Plus, all of these win conditions that we mentioned either ended up getting banned or are just so much weaker than something else that's going on in the format or susceptible to too much interaction right now. Yep. Because CDH is a complete different beast now than it used to be. It's a lot slower than it's ever been, I think. Yeah, it's probably true. A grindier, for sure. At least since I've been playing. Like, there's yeah, never it's been, slowed down. Yeah. There's never been a CDH in my mind that's this accepting of basically any commander to do almost any strategy. Yeah, I would say that's probably true. So Thrasios Timna, I'm still very scared of this deck. It's still a great deck. Yeah, it's still like probably besides the Opus Thief, probably the scariest deck here. Versus Winota? It's about as strong as Winota. I put these two around the same as like, I consider them both like tier three. They're not going to be in the uh, top 10. So it, I guess placement won't matter. It doesn't so. matter. The next one we're going to talk about is Anya. Oh, Anya Stink. 
Anya just stinks. If yeah. we're talking about a deck that has to play too many bad cards. Yeah, how about 66% of your deck being bad cards? Anya's fast. Anya does one thing very well. Anya has to play too many dead cards, too many bad cards, too much nothing. They can't even resemble something remotely good. You can say, but this one does something, something that, no, they're all bad. They're it's not all, good. Yeah, exactly. I want to be flexible in CDH. I want to be able to win without my commanders. I don't want them to be as necessary as everything else. I need to be playing a good deck. And from my perspective, this just requires too much of the commander and not only that but anya's then win condition with the world gorger dragon is also super frail and super fragile yeah super frail and fragile i totally agree with you so this is just pooper stinkums all the way pooper stinkums all the way and it's unfortunate because i love vampires i wish anya was a little better and i would love an excuse to play anya i think it's like a fun deck to play i don't want to bring it to a tournament and it's not very scary maybe the excuse to play it will be a patron submits it interesting that being said i'm not afraid of this deck when i do see it pop up not scary and i i admittedly disrespect it a little bit and that's how it wins and that's how it wins where do we rank it then like the worst the least scariest what's the least scariest currently scion of the ur dragon yeah that's a five color deck man that deck can win this one couldn't <laughs> couldn't possibly ever win. Doesn't even make sense. I, I try to think about it winning. I can't think. I can never imagine it winning. I hope we're not been too mean to all these commanders. I don't mean it in a mean way. You only roast the ones you love. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's what it is. And Anya. And Anya. <laughs> The last deck we're going to talk about is the Mimeoplasm. This is a CDH deck? I've heard it, it was. Not in my brain, not in my memory. It can be Hulk, right? Sure. And then what? And then you sack Hulk, and then you go through a Hulk line, and then win the game. Not and it's in blue-black, so you get to play Thoracle Demonic Consultation. That's good. Hulk's not good anymore. Hulk's bad now. I don't really love Hulk. Flash was really great. The other ways so far that I've seen to get Hulk into play, I don't like him as much. It's better when Rule of Law is doing a ton in the format, but Rule of Law is seeing significantly less play right now. I agree with that statement for sure. So it's much worse. Yeah. I'm not afraid of the mini Mimeoplasm, so. Not scary. Not scary. On, on the art, on the on the card art, T-Rex arm? Oh, I that would I would shit myself. If I saw it in real life? Oh, Very yeah. scary. Definitely very scary. Across the commander table, not scary. In casual, much scarier, though. So when we do our spookiest podcast, yeah, do you want to do it based on their look? Like they look the spookiest? Or is it like, oh, yeah, it's technically no, it like the, scariest the best deck in CD. The best it's decks, just like, yeah, the ones that I'm most afraid of. Okay. I think the command zone did that, basically. Scariest decks in Commander, and it was decks I thought they were the strongest. Oh. We can do it for CDH, though. It's different. Yeah. Oh, that's true. It is different because it's CEDH. Yeah. Cool. Do you want to know what the top 10 least scary commanders are? Give it to me. All right. The 10th least scary commander is... Kess, Dissident Mage. Ooh. The ninth least scary commander is Jessica Ishai. Oh. That sounds like a weird sentence. I feel like a lot of people are scared of that combination when they see it. The eighth least scary commander is Narset Enlightened Master. That's the old one, right? That's the original Narset with the extra combats and turns. Got it. Next is Una, Queen of the Fae. Le less scary than Narset. Even less scary is... Teferi of Teferi Chainville fame. The least scary deck than that is, I forgot what number we're on, is Edric, Spymaster. Okay. The next least scary deck is Prosh. The third least scary deck in CEDH is the Mimeoplasm, but not based on how it looks, based on how it performs. The second least scary deck in CEDH now is Scion of the Ur Dragon, and the least scary CEDH commander is Anya Falconrath. It's a perfect list. Perfect list. I wouldn't change anything about it. Neither would I. These commanders, to me, are not scary. I'm not afraid of any of them when I, I see them. I am looking forward so much to getting my ass whooped by all of them when y'all find a way to come and play with us. <laughs> because I'm certainly going to lose these commanders a lot now 100%, that I said this. hundred <laughs> percent, yeah. My confirmation bias is going to be every time it comes up, yep. it's going to happen I'm gonna now. Write it down and put it on the list. That's funny. Thank you so much for watching or listening. If you'd like to support us directly, you can do so on Patreon, like our $100 patrons. Mark Cirillo, Zachary Nelson, she doesn't even go here. Joey Aarons, SoCal Acura, Stormageddon, Cool Bean Man, Luke Cook, AJ Alvosebi, Kylock, 
Demon of Rosgrees, Kawaja A. Hamid, Lauren Connell, and Baby G Bus. If you want to pick up any of our merch, you can do that at playtowinmtg.com. Thank you so much, Dragon Shields, for supporting the show. Make sure you use our affiliate link down below to go get all of your Dragon Shield needs, like their cool nest deck boxes. Follow us on TikTok, Twitter, and Instagram for more content. Thank you for watching or listening to the podcast. We'll see you next time. Elliot Ringwald, Dalton Poteet, Kadanis, Lutri's dad, Justin, Man Solo, Millet, Pedro, Jacob Depp, Michael Ballou, Jan Wildfang, Thomas Bueno, Swampy McGee, David Nelson. I gotta sneeze, I'm so sorry. Do it. Oh, dude, that got all over me. Oh,